in Activity 6, Tractor Traction, students experiment with traction and friction. Students first discover how traction affects the forward motion of a rotating object and then investigate how friction affects the distance a rotating object will travel. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 6, Hex Nuts, Long Rubber Bands, Tractors from Activity 5, Roll of String, and a roll of masking tape. You will also need to provide pairs of safety goggles, hole punch, 3x5 index cards, and a meter stick. To prepare for the activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 6 for each student. Clear a large area on the floor for the students to conduct their tractor trials and establish a starting line using a piece of masking tape. Mark off a distance of 1.5 meters in increments of 15 centimeters. Then cut a piece of string 16 centimeters long for each team. Each team will also need one tractor sled made from an index card. To make a sled, fold one end of the card to form a two centimeter flap and punch a hole in the middle of the flap about one centimeter from the edge. For this activity, each student will need one pair of safety goggles. In addition, each team of four will need a tractor from activity five, a long rubber band, a sled made from an index card, three hex nuts, a piece of string, and a piece of tape 13 centimeters long. To begin the activity, ask students, what do you think will happen to the distance the tractors travel if you remove the wide rubber bands from the rear wheels? Distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 6 to each student and have them record their predictions. Next, explain that traction, the amount of contact between two surfaces necessary for one surface to travel across the other, is a particular type of friction. It helps students understand that though friction is not desirable in most machines, traction is sometimes beneficial. Then, have the teams retrieve the tractors from Activity 5. Distribute a pair of safety goggles to each student and one long rubber band to each team. Remind the students how to wrap the rubber band around the axle to propel the tractor. Wearing safety goggles, attach the rubber band between the small screw eye and the peg on the large axle. Next, Tell students to conduct several trials and measure how far the tractors travel in each. Explain that in order to conduct fair trials, the variables must be controlled. First, for each trial, the teams should wrap the rubber band around the axle three times. Second, all teams should start with the front wheels of their tractors on the starting line. And third, the distance traveled is the distance from the starting line to the point where the front wheels contact the floor after the tractor has come to a stop. Next, tell students to remove the rubber bands from the rear wheels and conduct three trials to determine how far the tractors will travel. Then, have them replace the rubber bands and conduct three more trials. Have them record their results on Activity Sheet 6. Ask students, what do you think the rubber bands on the rear wheels are for? Students should conclude that the rubber bands help the wheels stick to the floor as the wheels turn. Then ask, What happened when there were no rubber bands on the rear wheels? Students should understand that without the rubber bands, the bare wheels spun on the floor so that even though the wheels had the same force to power them, the tractor did not go as far. Next, ask students, what do you think would happen if the wheels did not stick to the surface at all, as if they were on ice? Explain that the wheels would simply spin and the tractor would not move, and that without movement over distance, no work is done. Help students realize that the rubber bands increase traction. Then ask, did traction increase or decrease the distance that the tractor traveled? Traction increased the distance. Next, have the students predict what would happen to the distance the tractors travel if they were to pull a weighted sled. Distribute an index card sled, a piece of string, three hex nuts, and a piece of tape to each team. Direct the students to tie one end of the string to the hole in the sled and the other end to the screw eye at the rear end of the tractor. Then place the hex nuts in a row on the sled and tape them down. Have the students conduct three more trial runs, this time with the tractors pulling the weighted sleds. Remind them to wrap the rubber band around the axle three times only and to record the distance the tractor travels. Then instruct the teams to remove the rubber bands from the rear wheels and to conduct three more trials. 
remind them to record their results on their activity sheets. After all of the teams have completed their trials and recorded their observations, compare the class results and discuss the reasons for variation in these results. Ask students, did the tractor do work during any of the trials? How can you tell? Explain that in every trial, force was applied and the tractor moved over a distance. Then ask, what provided the force to move the tractor in all 12 trial runs? The rubber band unwinding around the axle provided the force. Next, ask, which simple machine accomplished the work of moving the tractor and sled? Students should reply, the wheel and axle. Then, ask students, how did the distance the tractor and sled moved compare to the distance the tractor alone moved? Why do you think this happened? The student should agree that the tractor pulling the weighted sled traveled a shorter distance because the friction produced by the weighted sled dragging on the floor decreased the forward motion of the tractor. Have students complete their activity sheets. And to conclude the activity, students should peel off the tape holding down the hex nuts and discard it. Have them return their assembled tractors along with the rubber bands, index card sleds, hex nuts, and string to the kit. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM teacher's guide.